And so Kyrie Irving is set to return tonight against the Memphis Grizzlies. And oh, is this going to be uh, a very interesting uh, uh, return, right? I mean, he's in Brooklyn, so we'll see how the fans react. I imagine the fans kind of embrace him uh, and, you know, things go well in that regard. Uh, Brooklyn clearly doesn't want him. He doesn't want to really be there from everything we've seen. He just wants to play basketball, right? And he doesn't want to lose his paycheck, all that stuff. As soon as the Players Association stepped in, that was it, right? Kyrie has to play. The Brooklyn Nets have to bring him back because they didn't want to get sued. The the Players Association was already talking like, if Kyrie doesn't return, we're going to file a grievance and all that stuff, and it's just going to be an absolute mess for the Nets. Uh, We even saw Ben Simmons. uh, He was able, and he was blatantly sabotaged and stuff, with the, with the Sixers, yet he was still able to get paid. Uh, he was able to take them to court, get his money back that uh, that they refused to pay him. I imagine Kyrie Irving's probably going to get that back pay at some point uh, that, you know, that they didn't pay him for the, you know, what was it, seven, eight games that he, he missed. Uh, I imagine that he's going to get that money back um, one way or another. Uh, but regardless, the Brooklyn Nets have looked pretty solid since Kyrie left, right? They're moving the ball more. They're, they're not running the isolation plays as much as they were with Kyrie and KD. Uh, granted, a lot of that could just be, you know, Jacques Vaughn being the new head coach and still in like, hey, we need to move the ball. We need to share the ball more. It can't just be Kevin Durant, you know, and going that approach. The defense has been better. At one point, they were like top four in defense over like a seven game stretch. Uh, I, I haven't checked it at the time of recording this video, so I don't know if they still are, but they were playing much better defense. They were, you know, their offensive output was much more efficient uh, just from everything. Guys were hitting shots. You had games where, like, Seth Curry came back, and he was putting up, like, 22 off the bench. This Brooklyn Nets team looks a lot better, And and a real question is, is this team, does this team play better without Kyrie? Now, obviously, the team is better with Kyrie. Kyrie's just an incredible talent, but there is an argument to be made about, like, fit, uh, and you know him being the star and just the talent that he is, trying to get him the ball and have him, you know, put up the points that he needs to put up uh, night in and night out, and taking away from just the flow of the offense. That's going to be a real question. Now they are playing a Memphis team, right? And because th- this is Kyrie's first game uh, with Vaughn and all these and all the the every, now that everyone's starting to come back, Brooklyn's in this new space, so. Luckily, they're playing a Memphis team that basically has nobody, right? They don't have Baines. They don't have Triple J. They don't have Ja Morant. Uh, Brooklyn is an eight-point favorite at home. So this is a game that even with or without Kyrie, they should win. But if for whatever reason they lose this game, I wouldn't be shocked if the conversation starts to turn a little bit here, especially if they lose multiple games with Kyrie back. I think it's going to be very, very interesting to see how the conversation is and what the Brooklyn Nets do. Because after this game, they go play the Sixers. Again, Sixers are a very hobbled team, right? They're they're missing James Harden, uh, Tyrese Maxey. So that's going to be an interesting dynamic as well. Like, can the Nets beat the Sixers? If you lose to the Sixers, and you lose to a hobbled Sixers that basically have nobody, and you lose to a Memphis Grizzly team that basically has nobody, conversation starts to change again. Then you play the Raptors, right? Raptors beat you. It just, I mean, it's, it could they win, uh, you know, two of the next three or three of the next four? Uh, They do play the Pacers after the Raptors. So, you know, maybe they go on a nice little stretch with Kyrie. All will be right, right? And I do, I'd like to see Kyrie have some success. I do think Kyrie is an incredible basketball talent. Uh, Am I biased and want him on the Lakers? Sure. But in reality, right, like we still need to see him perform. You know, we need to see him be in this position. I just don't like it for the Nets. Even if he went to another team, like even if he didn't go to Lakers, like let's say Kyrie Irving went to Miami, I would be rooting for him. I'd be like, let's go. Like, you know, I bummed he didn't go to Lakers, but hey, I think he's going to be a great acquisition for Miami. I think he's going to kill it for Miami. I just want to see him out of Brooklyn more than anything. I really do. I just think, you know, the Nets organization is an absolute mess. They constantly say that they don't want to be in the headlines for anything other than basketball, blah, blah, blah. And every single you just crossroad in this entire season has all been decisions made to be negative in the headlines. Everything they've done, every choice that they make. And look, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, I still believe this is their last season with the Brooklyn Nets. I think this is it. I think even if Kyrie does play the rest of this season, which I still would be kind of surprised. I really do. I still would be kind of surprised if Kyrie rides out the rest of the season. I think at some point Brooklyn either just gets rid of him or... They end up, uh, 
trying to just trade them. And, and by trade them, I think what they'll do is like, they'll try to work out like the Westbrook trade where it's like, hey, you have some long-term salary. We have Kyrie Irving, a $36 million expiring contract. We'll take those guys. You take Kyrie. All is right in the world, right? And then they wave Kyrie. Like maybe like they could look at the Hornets deal, right? Like the Lakers want the Hornets deal. Uh, maybe the, the Brooklyn Nets come in and do the Hornets deal, right? Take like a Terry Rozier, a Kelly Oubre or something, give uh give them uh Kyrie Irving. Uh Terry Rozier kind of you know, he's a he's a Kyrie light in many ways. Though does a lot of the same things. He's not as good as Kyrie, but does a lot of the same things. He's still very young. Maybe they could work something like that out. But nonetheless, whether Kyrie is on this team the rest of the season or not, I think this is it for them. I uh I think if I'm actually some I'm actually curious to see how long is it gonna be before another controversial headline happens. You know, because the media is going to look for anything with Kyrie Irving. Anything with Kyrie Irving, right? Like, Kyrie just looks at somebody the wrong way. Oh, look, he's this and that the other. Like, it's just the the world we live in, the media we have, and Kyrie's like the target right now. So I'm curious to see how long it's going to be before something else is said, something else is done. You know, there's some type of controversy or something. And look, Brooklyn, even with Kyrie, as sad as it is, I just, I don't think this team is anything more than a play-in or, you know, late playoff seed. I think that this team is very likely going to be a team that's, again, eliminated in the first round. Based on how the 10 years gone, that's basically what it's going to be, right? I mean, they have one playoff series win since these two went to Brooklyn. And think of all the talent they've had. Now, Ben Simmons had his best game with the Nets last game. So maybe he can kind of get back into the swing of things. Maybe he'll he'll start picking it back up. That could be huge for the Nets. Maybe they kind of turn it around. You know, maybe they can climb the seedings and stuff. I just, they just haven't given us any signs otherwise. It's one of those things. I, I can't believe in you until you prove to me otherwise. You know, like, it's like the boy who cried wolf. You tell me every year you're a contender and every year, you're, you know, you have arguably the best roster on paper and everything looks great. And like, you should be a legit team in this league. And every year they underperform, underachieve. And it's just, it, I just don't see that happening again. And I just think that again, they're in the same boat. They are a, they are one bad day away. And I said this in the off season and look what happened. They are, li- they're still one bad day away from this whole thing just imploding again. And it's like, how many times, if you're the Nets, are you going to just keep letting this stuff implode? How many times is Kevin Durant going to just sit here and just say, all right, you know, at what point does Kevin Durant say, all right, enough is enough, get me out of here. I need you to get me out of here. Like, no, I gave you a chance, I gave you an opportunity, you didn't get it done, that's your fault. You know, like, I, I, I tried to play ball, I tried to do the right thing, you had your chance, trade me. You know, and what time? At what point do you just decide to blow this up? You know, I uh, these next like handful of games are going to be very interesting because I do think Kyrie, at bare minimum, plays a handful of games for them. I just think because now that the Players Association came in and they basically forced the Nets' hand, I think that what this essentially means is like they're going to have to show face. They're going to have to play Kyrie Irving. They're going to have to kind of like you know, play ball because they don't want to get sued. They don't want to get in trouble, all that stuff. So Kyrie's probably going to play at least a handful of games and then they'll probably evaluate it from there. But based on how those games go, could really kind of dictate um, what happens with Kyrie going forward. I still think that they try to trade him. I think their hope is like Kyrie plays really well and they can kind of like show that to teams and, you know, be like, hey, Kyrie's playing good again. He's bought in. He's better. Come, you know, give us assets for him. Like, that's what I think they're hoping for. But I just, I don't see it, if I'm being honest. I think that they're going to ultimately either lose him for nothing next season or they're just going to have to buy him out. And I mean, at least buying him out, you know, and, and wave, you likely save yourself, you know, $10 million. You might as well save the money. Now, I just, like I said, I just want to see Kyrie thrive. I want to see him have success. Um, we're going to get a, a real understanding of, is this does this team play better with or without Kyrie very soon? Uh, because again, I mean, you got the Memphis Grizzlies and you got the Sixers, and, and you know, in two games that both are extremely hobbled, and that those are games that you should absolutely win, absolutely. So if they end up losing those games or one of those games, I could see this conversation changing and just shifting heavily. But 
Anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments section below. What do you think of Kyrie's return? Uh, do you Are you like me where you're just like, get him out of Brooklyn? You know, like, he, he, he shouldn't be in Brooklyn. Like I said, I mean, I, I love him on the Lakers. I think he'd fit perfectly on the Lakers. Uh, but I just want to see him anywhere. Even if he went to, like, Miami or, you know, something like that. As long as it's not the Clippers, <laughs> then I don't care. Like, uh, you know, as, as any... Any other team. I, I think he'd be great in Miami. I just don't think Miami would do it because I think he's not really like a Miami guy. Like they're very specific on the type of players that they want, but they could really use Kyrie Irving. Um, but, you know, what do you think? What do you think of this whole mess? How long do you think he rides out the rest of the season with the Nets? Do you think he ends up getting traded? Do you think he gets bought out? What do you think ends up happening? And do you think this team is better with or without Kyrie? Again, I I, I mean, I think that they're, they, they're better with Kyrie, but do they play better? You know, is fit. Uh, a, a real question, right? Because it could be, very well could be. But again, love to hear your thoughts, opinions, however you feel, good, bad, ugly, somewhere in between. Let me know down in the comment section below.